Okay, although the Cato frame is applicable to any acceleration profile, the concepts and terminology needed to describe the Cato reference frame are most quickly and easily understood if they are initially couched in the context of the standard well-known twin paradox scenario. First, consider the even simpler scenario where two perpetually inertial observers are moving at some fixed velocity v relative to one another, and then and when they momentarily are co-located, they just happen to be exactly the same age then. For example, it could just happen that they are born at the, that instant of their location, co-location, even though their mothers could have a relative velocity of v at that instant. Um, since each of those newborns is perpetually inertial observer, they are each entitled to use the Lorentz equations to determine at any instant of their own life the current age of the other, and each of them is entitled to use the well-known time dilation result of special relativity to determine how fast or how slowly the other is currently aging relative to their own aging. In the standard twin paradox, the home twin is perpetually inertial by assumption, and thus is entitled to use either the Lorentz equation or the time dilation result, or both, to determine the age of the traveling twin. To allow more brevity and less clutter in the writing which follows, the home twin will always be referred to as a she, and the traveling twin will be referred to as a he. The traveling twin must accelerate in order to accomplish his turnaround, so he is not a perpetually inertial observer, and his reference frame during his trip cannot be an inertial frame. Specifically, he is not allowed during his entire trip to use the time dilation result to determine the current age of his twin. Okay, so because he's accelerating, um, he can't use the time dilation to determine the age of the uh, of his sister during the entire trip. So what is the reference frame of the traveling twin? Okay, there are five requirements that any such frame must have. Okay, so um, Mike Mike Fontenot is saying here that the ref that the traveling twin actually has a reference frame. Um, I my my own opinion differs a bit. You can you can construct a reference frame, but uh, let's but let's see whether my construction would meet uh, his construction. Number one, it must be such that the traveler is perpetually located at the perpet spatial origin. Yes, I think so, and that's a that's something that radar time does not meet. Um, number two, it must specify how the traveler at each instant of his life is to determine the current age and the current position of each and every object or person in the assumed flat universe. Okay, number two, number two is optional. Um, you can do it that way. But it's not, it's not a must. It's not e necessarily even a best. Um, the best way to do it is, well, I think I've made animations of this somewhere. Ah, here's a graph I have of foliation and transformation. These are uh, foliated. This, this uh, diagram has the space-time diagram foliated along the future light cone. This doesn't meet. Uh, this does not meet um, Mike Fontenot's uh, requirement uh, because it is it doesn't it doesn't render the uh, it doesn't keep the path of the observer at the origin. Neither is this one, but uh, this one attempts to show the past light cone along the. Okay, I've got this uh, f program on my computer called Foliation and Transformation. Is this the one that I'm looking for? Yeah, I think so. This is a... what is this? What's this say? This shows a foliation of a circle along the um, x-axis, or a rotating circle. Um, here we have parametric plot r cosine theta r sine theta r one ten theta equals zero to two pi. What did I do down here? Parametric plot of the square root of x squared plus y squared, comma 
the arctangent of y over x. What should I say about this plot at this time? This is a mapping that renders the r coordinate straight and vertical, uh, while making the theta coordinate straight and horizontal. But wait, the x coordinate was already straight. It wasn't horizontal before, so the single point at the center of the origin original diagram has been stretched and represented as a vertical line, r equals zero. So I was thinking, this should be counted as one among many differences between Barbara's actual experience and coordinates. She would never, she would never, would never will legitimately claim to believe that event at r equals zero extended for e infinity. But then I realized, of course, she will. I forgot. My conjecture was that this transformation should successfully yield a foliation of Rindler coordinate system. So it behooves me now to do that foliation, which is going to be considerably more work. One of feature of the diagram I see are these two points. As r rotates to its longest diagonal as theta reaches pi over 4. So when, what's that mean? It means um, if you have a square coordinate system, um, this is the this is the transformation of a square. I think I have an animation of that square somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. That's good. Yeah, here it is. Um, okay, so it's not an animation of the entire square. It's just an animation of a portion of it. Um, it doesn't a portion of it that doesn't quite reach the zero. Sorry for the the messiness of the animation, but. With the next uh, animation, I uh, said that time should be marching forward, and so uh, not on, or maybe, no, this one doesn't do that. This is still just rotating around the zero. That, that stays at the same point, and the square moves around. But basically, you can construct a coordinate system from uh, looking at from looking at this by using this line here. And here's another one where I've really kind of uh, put those two things together. Will this play uh, successfully? Yeah, so what I did here was I... Oh, it looks... Okay, so here I do actually have the have the radius moving upwards as you go. And maybe okay that is what I had to do to reproduce I think that is what I had to do to reproduce the uh, the image that I had in the original diagram have the origin moving forward and I think I figured out a way to combine um, snapshots of each of these things and I actually generated this image right here so you can see that um, this this equation the equation from the equation of that, I got the equation of that. Or actually, I think instead of using that, I ended up using this, which was a much narrower region in the di in the diagram. All right, so what's this? Um, Lorentz foliation dot png. Uh, somehow I decided instead of using rotation that I would use uh, the Lorentz transformation equation. What did I do here? Um, this is part of a of a uh, routine in in Mathematica called uh, well, graphics white evaluate see through window. Okay, um, I think is see through window. No, see through window is not a function in Mathematica. It looks like I must have defined it somehow. Yeah, see through window. Um, given the type is module if type equals simultaneity and this is the main okay here is the main issue uh, this is the main issue of of Mike Fontenot um, that he says the only way to uh, the only way well let me quote him it must specify how the traveler at each instant of his life is to determine the current age and current position of each and every object or person in the assumed flat universe. 
Now, I don't think that is true. I think you can do it that way. Um, but this is this is the essential difference. Is what I um, in in this code I've called the see-through window. Um, basically, you can either use simultaneity or pass light cone. Those are the two that I set up. The see if you say simultaneity, then you make a rectangle from basically from negative infinity to positive infinity in the position and you start and really um, theta to theta in time basically you've got a differential uh, distance between the bottom and the top of the box so this is this is supposed to represent a horizontal line in the space-time diagram on the other hand if your type is past light cone and that is another option um, and that's what is used, for instance, in in any diagram, in any sort of simulation where you're trying to figure out what is actually seen by the observer. Um, then I made this is a little bit more difficult. It's two polygons, a polygon going from theta minus delta theta over two. Wait. I think this these two polygons why do they have they have what two points or four they have four points in them why do they have four points let's see if we start at 0 comma theta plus 0 minus delta theta over 2 and then go from 0 comma delta theta plus delta theta over 2 uh, to max x comma theta minus max x plus delta theta over 2 to max x uh, plus or max x or theta minus max x minus theta delta theta over 2 so we're constructing a polygon that looks something like that it's got four points and then similarly with the other one we would be constructing a polygon over here that uh, constructs that makes four points now Mike Fontenot wants us to use uh, these points here in in the diagram and uh, and I would recommend using these points here and this is the points these are the points that are used in um, uh, a slower speed of light the ones along the past light cone uh, radar time well it doesn't do it this way it it just it uses a completely different kind of method that uh, that is sort of based on taking measurements from shaking rulers which is okay uh, for experimental purposes because uh, that's the only measurements we have the, the measurements from shaking rulers and considered in that light um, maybe uh, that is the best that's some to in some places that's the best place to start from and then you can reconstruct the actual Minkowski space time from those uh, measurements from shaking rulers okay so um, Mike, Mike Fontenot sent me an email today that said that he didn't think that I had read this. Uh, I, my uh, impression on reading it through the first time was that I, I agreed with everything that he said, so I didn't realize. Um, so this is this is the point. So I actually don't agree um, that with this particular issue right here. Um, it can specify how the traveler at each instant of his life you can use the uh, isocline of current of of simultaneity if you wish uh, but you don't have to uh, you can use you could also use the past light cone on every other point here I agree but that one uh, I I don't um, I don't agree when he says more than one reference frame for an accelerating observer have been defined and there is not yet a consensus about which one is most appropriate this this is what I thought was his main point that this article 
describes one such reference frame, the Cato frame. Now I had been going by current age of distance objects and I did not realize uh, at the time that this was a frame or maybe I forgot that it was a, it was a frame. All, all I really remembered was that I had not had any issues with uh, Mike Fontenot, um, so I didn't I didn't think to uh, you know try to get the exact words right. Um, sometimes uh, ideas can be consistent without using exactly the same words. Um, even though the frame of the traveling twin, since he accelerates during some portion of his trip, cannot be an inertial frame. There is, at each instant t of the traveler's life, a unique inertial frame which is momentarily stationary with respect to the traveler at, the in, at that instant, with the spatial axis pointing in the same direction as the home twin spatial axis. That's what I, that's what I call temporal facing. At each moment you are facing in time, you have your spatial axis, you've got your world line. Uh, vertical. That's the way I would say that. Um, in vertical in the space-time diagram. Such that the traveler is located at the spatial origin of the frame in that instant and it's vertical. Furthermore, for uniqueness we require that the time coordinate of the inertial frame be equal to the traveler's age at that instant. So that means you've got a horizontal isocline of time. Your time is should be horizontal uh, in the space-time diagram. That unique inertial frame is called the momentarily stationary inertial reference frame uh, or uh, as a momentarily co-moving inertial reference frame or a tangential tangential inertial reference frame. It seems like they're all equivalent ideas to me. At the instant t in the traveler's life, abbreviated as MSIRF parentheses t, in general MSIRF will correspond to a different inertial frame from one instant in the traveler's life to the next. It is only during unaccelerated segments of the traveler's life that the MSIRF of t will consist of the same inertial frame for the entire segment. So it's it's these things that have motivated me and uh, W. Woods six to uh, to put these animate put animations on Wikipedia and stuff like that because we thought that this seemed like a fairly clear idea um, and we we thought uh, I thought that I was agreeing with Mike Fontenot so when I when I posted uh, these animations on Wikipedia um, of what's going on during the typical twin paradox explanation, you can see, for instance, let's wait for it to start over, that at this time, the or as you go out, event F and then event E becomes a, simultaneous with A, then event B simultaneous with E, and then event C becomes simultaneous with E. All the while, event F remains on this light cone, so it does not, so it it stays in the observational space, it stays in the, uh, in the observation space from the uh, event that is going on now. Anyway, I, my impression was that I was in essential agreement with Mike Fontenot that these momentarily co-moving or momentarily stationary reference frames, all, each one, each one of those momentarily stationary reference frames, is a single uh, is a single what do you call it frame in this animation, and during each frame you can see that the that the a the current age of the distant event is changing. But the actual observed event and the actual ob the event that is being observed at point X is not changing and the event that is is being affected by this event is not changing. Those those events stay right on the stay right in on that same line. So given this generally infinite collection of 
inertial frames, the Cato frame is defined to be the single unique frame having the property that its conclusions about the current age and location of all objects or persons in the assumed flat universe at any instant t of the traveler's life is the same as the corresponding conclusions of the momentarily stationary inertial reference frame. Uh, I don't object to that, i.e. at each instant of his life the traveler adopts the viewpoint about the simultaneity and location of distant objects of the inertial frame with which he is momentarily stationary at that instant. The acronym CATO originates from the phrase current age of a distant object. And yeah, um, but current age of distant object and MSIRF are not the same. I don't if you uh, if you call it the Cato frame, the only things I object to is calling the current age of distant objects a frame. Um, the current age of distant objects frame, I guess, would be taking um, taking a whole bunch of these uh, lines, and I think I've got another video where I talk where I discuss that. So I, I think I'll just link to that. Okay, so let me make it clear. Um, the two, really, really, this is a minor, a minor semantic point. I do not feel that the current age of distant objects. Well, okay, no, I do. Okay, that. So I don't disagree that there is a Cato frame. Um, you can, you can, in principle, construct a, um, construct something that create that looks like a cape. Ah, here it is. Um, basically constructing a uh, I don't know what to call it exactly. I, I call it a foliation, but construct a, a a diagram from all of the uh, momentarily co-moving or from the line of simultaneity of a of a Lorentz transformation. Um, so that's what that's what this would look like. This this would be essentially the idea behind the Cato frame, I think. Um, Mike Fontenot could uh, could confirm or reject that impression. Here is uh, my idea more of how things are done, say in MIT labs, uh, slow a slower speed of light, where they use events from the past light cone of the observation of the observer. <laughs> this makes it so um, the uh, the positions of the events move move around, but they they go they run directly forward in time. They don't go they don't go backward and forward in time. So um, in some sense, this this way of modeling it is uh, superior because. Uh, it actually represents what you would act, you would actually see from the point of the point of view of the observer. Now, on the other hand, uh, radar time is well, radar time. Um, it's it's a completely different animal, um, and uh, the. Uh, so I don't. I'm not sure exactly what to say about it right now. I'm writing a paper on it, um, and I I have lots of issues with radar time uh, for reasons that I don't like it, even though it's a mathematically valid idea. Um, but of course, my my opinion does not make something invalid, and there might be good reason to use radar time for their purposes. For one, uh, from this point of view of the observer, you can, you're, you, you're making, when you're trying to make the measurement from distant events, then you are affected by the event that is coming towards you and then the event that is going away from you. So, uh, or no, you you can only measure the point from your own position by sending out a signal and then receiving the signal. Um, if, unless you could actually just look at it and base it on uh, 
base your observations on the past light cone, which which is what you would ordinarily do, because very rarely would you have access to radar if you're doing um, major, if you're doing uh, more major astronomy. Um, hope this was helpful. Um, there is only one word in this entire uh, phrase. I can say the uh, the only word that I entirely disagree with is the word must um, right here. Must specify how the traveler at each instant of his life is to determine the current age. Oh, well, no. No, I don't even agree with that word. No, I, I totally agree with this um, because it must specify how, I mean, even because this does specify what event is simultaneous with with each instant that the uh, observer experiences. Um, it also specifies like all kinds of other events, um, but it does determine that one as well. So the reason that I'm not arguing with uh, Mike Fontenot here is because I don't see anything to disagree with. I may not have recently checked all of his math or anything like that, but um, fundamentally I think he's on the right track. And, and frankly, when you know you agree with somebody, um, you you don't really want to read every everything that he's saying because you're already kinda like, okay, you got it. Okay, I got it. I know what you're I know what you're doing. Um, <laughs>